Todd, I'm still trying to figure out what those seven players were when I first got here. <laughs> so, well, have you bought your season tickets yet? Let's do this. 
this. Let's open this up for some questions. Yes, ma'am. Last year, the team watching them play was pure joy, whether they were winning or losing. And it was because those kids loved each other. They were a true team. What's it going to take to get there again this year, and, and will it be able to do like that? Well, that's a great observation, great question. Um, I'd like to start with this. I've always said, and I use this scenario with my players, and sometimes with me, I don't think get it, but I use it. You know, when, you, when you're baking a cake or a pie, you can't have the same ingredients. You have different kind of ingredients. They all got to fit differently. You have, you have a pie that's all sugar, it's not too good. So my point is, you put a team together, you have different kind of ingredients, different kind of pieces. But the one common ingredient that most important, as I said earlier, you have to be people. We have to be people. I believe that. And we've got to get them to not just understand, understand the roles, more importantly, accept roles. But it's a whole lot easier to do when you have good people. Um, and I keep saying this, we have good people. So that's our challenge. You know, last year, the thing that team did really well, and Darius was kind of a that spoon and stirred everything. He was a tremendous passer. He always saw the next play happen. He was a very, you know, some guys can pass the ball. We really don't want to pass it. But he's one of those guys who can pass it. He was a willing passer. Uh, we were very skilled in that perimeter, very skilled. You know, I think if I look at the team right now, that's the one area uh, I don't think we're as good as we were. Other areas we may be better. But the ability to really share that thing, that's the area we got to continue to get better at and see. Uh, but we we got to take the strengths of our players, wherever they are, and figure out what makes your team better with those strengths. And that's our challenge this year with this team. But I like our opportunity to do that. Yes, sir, Dougie. I got it. Sorry. Doug, did you give me a room, Jeff? But my important question is that cake that you're making, is that a Duncan Hines cake? Pillsbury. Oh! Yes, sir. Is, is Savage as good as everybody says he is? Um, he's a better person than everybody can imagine he is. That's number one. He's, he's a good player. Uh, what makes him really good, you know, like I say, kind of person is. And here's what I trust kind of person is. I mean, first off, <clears throat> work ethic. He's got, he's one of those guys, when you're not, not looking, he's working. You know, some guys just want to work and watch him. So he's one of those guys that I don't worry about the decisions he's going to make. When nobody's looking, he's really who he is. He's off the charts. He can really shoot the basketball. Uh, you know, he hadn't played for a year, so he's figuring out this team a little bit. But, hey, listen, everybody remembers when we played on my first year at Austin P. when he's at Austin P. he put 22 or 24 on us right then. Now, I know we couldn't guard the but still, again, <laughs> he can make a shot. Uh, and, again, he's a, one of my best leaders. Every day on and off the court, there's consistency. Never going to be late. Breakfast, class, study table, all that. Um, and again, he's, his role is, is, he's not natural at it, but he leads by example already. Now we have to even talk more to him. If you got a choice of a guy who talks <coughs> and don't lead versus a guy who leads and don't talk, I'll take that guy who leads and don't talk every day. But he's getting much better at it. He's going to be a good peace force. And he is a terrific young man. I can promise you that. Who knows his dad? You know his dad? Who's state trooper? I think he's in the drug force now. You ever met him? Yeah. Pia, yeah, don't sound like you know him. What have you been doing for five years? <laughs> Hey, here's what I tell them. Just keep selling until the farm 
commercial says, there's nothing else left. So just keep going and keep buying. You know, I asked that question. Uh, what's a, does anybody have a real answer right now for sure? A couple hundred. A couple hundred. Wow. wow. Well, let's make sure of this. We don't want a couple hundred. We don't want it. And again, we have about three weeks left. Let's make sure that first game, whoever it is, you've heard me say this, that there's not a ticket available nowhere. The people's have to knock on those doors to try to get in that place. That's the way it's got to be. And make sure everybody who has tickets, if you cannot be there, make sure you put butts in those seats. If you can't be there every night again all of you who came last year all of you who have bought those tickets thank you but you see how fun diddle is when that place is packed in those last four or five games last year how special is that who was there at the marshall who was there at the, those last games boston college and all that hey how special is that that's the way it needs to be. I think it's Kenny. I think Kenny comes natural for him. He's the shot. That's the fifth year guy from all. He's got a lot of toughness. And like I told him, man, you don't have time to get comfortable. And you're a fifth year guy. You got to come in there ready to go. You know, everybody respects you already. Uh, again, he's one of those guys with that ball shot. He thinks it's his. That's a good role to have. Those who don't know him, the average, you know, 10 and, 10 and 7. And eight or all the match on the team that won the SEC. Um, and he was that fourth option. He's been very good for us. He's been very coachable. Uh, adjusted a little bit out the perimeter more than maybe he was used to. In high school, and his first two years of Presbyterian, he played center. He's not about 6'3, he's about 225 pounds. Went to Auburn, he played four, but he played some five. Years. So now we're, he's had to make an adjustment with him, pass a little bit more. Uh, and we're still trying to figure him out just a little bit. What's his strengths? You know, we want him to be able to play his strengths. We know strengths is really not the ball. Watch his strengths offensively. And again, the more stuff we put him in since practice to start, uh, we, we're figuring that out a little bit. But why? We're figuring it out. He's been a great kid, uh, a good person, good teammate, and he got some toughness about it. That's one of those things we want to add to our team last year. So he's done that. Mm -hmm. so that's the other question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you talked about strength. <clears throat> I know it didn't work out too well for Samson. Is it true that Hollingsworth has cut his hair? Uh, <laughs> didn't work out good for who? <laughs> Samson and, you know, Samson. Delano. 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 Strength. Delano? Help me again. Did Hollywood cut his hair? He cut his hair. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get the punch line. Who was it? I, mean, I said, strength didn't work out too well for Samson after he cut his hair. I just want to know about Hollywood now. He cut his hair. Oh, okay. Gotcha. We'll see. Um, you know, he cut on his own. Uh, we got another, we got another, another freshman who like his hair too. A young man from Canada, uh, Delano. And he's about 6'8 already, but that bushy hair he's got is about 16. <laughs> <laughs> and he plays point guard much. <coughs> so it's a kind of different looking body standing out there. 6'8 already, hair makes him 16, bring that ball in the court a little bit. So. But if he plays the way he played last year, he cut his hair, he won't be more than that. College for him. I know where you're from. That's Battletown, Kentucky, which is a few miles up the river from Brandenburg. And I looked it up and it said you were the only distinguished person to ever come from there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that tells you how small town that is. I mean, that's for sure. They were struggling hard for somebody. And I understand this Battletown is really the city. Oh, yeah. I was from Wolf Creek. <laughs> He has been Wolf Creek, right, Ken? There you agree now. <laughs> really Wolf Creek. That's where I found you. Yes, yes, sir. Is Charles Matthews been injured? But is he as good as his talk? Well, first of all, I don't pay much attention to that talk. You pay attention to that talk, you'd be in trouble. Oh, God, I never. Never made a shot. They never threw a pass. They never caught.
he starts learning. There's a just and fall of young guys now. I mean, uh, you know, it's learning how hard you have to play in possession. But, but here's something different than most young people have. He has a really good basketball IQ. You don't see that sometimes in young guys. And number two, he's a great person. Three point guy, five student, speaks several different languages. I mean, he's a smart young man. He's got a good feel out there. Uh, he's got a chance. You know, you can't teach that size. He's, he's probably 6'9, 6'10, 240, 245, and <coughs> pretty good feel. But still, with that, there's an adjustment for him. How hard you play and how hard you practice every day. Um, but, Oh, he's got a chance. He's got a chance. Yeah. Does everybody know that Chaz got a new baby? Yeah. Does everybody know that? Yeah. He told me uh, he, I was uh, somewhere doing something. And normally Chaz always shows up where he couldn't come. He was changing diapers. Yes. <laughs> 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 Well, I mean, it's, to me, it's Marshall. You know, Marshall's a team that brings back four starters. You know, that's the team. And they got Elmore back. You all remember Elmore? Yeah, sure. They're good. They're going to be the team. You know, I think the two teams have kind of been at the top for the last three or four or five years, where it's been, back towards the top, middle, when you need to be. I think both those teams are taking a step back. Um, Old Dominion. Will still be good. Three stars back and fifth-year player. <coughs> you know, maybe maybe the San Antonio's and North Texas takes a little step up, uh, but the middles and UEB's probably taking a step back. Uh, to me, there's more separation than there has been. The first two years, there was five, six teams that were really good, really good. And everybody else takes a step back. Now I think it's probably two to three, four really good, and everybody else takes another little step back. Marshall's a team to be. That's a team. It's all him. Yes, sir. Who are your point guards? Well, um, Josh Anderson will be a point guard. And that's a uh, daily learning experience. He's made progress. We all know how quick and athletic he is. Trying to figure out for sure, you know, what he can handle mentally and what he can't handle mentally. So I know what to ask him to do. You know, last year, you know, he didn't play point guard. He played at the wing once he got eligible, so totally different stress put on him. Uh, but we all know this his ability in transition in an open court, uh, he's about as good as it comes. The most from the standpoint of putting his kid at that realm. Uh, the ability now to deliver the basketball in the half court against dug in defenses, that's the area that you get better at. You know, you can't just make a pass, you gotta get that ball to them when they're getting open. When they're open, it's too late. Too late. You gotta get to them when they're getting open. You gotta see it happen before it happens. You know, every player can see the play happen. The good players, in particular point guard, Got to see that play happen before it happens. And that's a challenge or something. We'll see how much of that he can handle. I don't know how much to ask him to do. How much I put him in those situations, he's got to, he's got to see that. I'll just what he can do. He's one. Uh, the Lotto's one. Uh, you know, we get Monte back after the first three games, is it, eight or nine? Fred, I mean, nine games, we get him back. And we know there's always a guy we can slide over in college for if we play at something. So we'll do it by committee. Early it'll be, a, it'll be a little bit of a challenge. And most of you all know what we're going to schedule. You know, so open it up at home against a, a team that we're going to beat 20 or 30 points, which probably 95% of most schools do. They open up, get an easy win. You know, I didn't want this, this team. You know, don't make us no better. I want to make this team better. And we took the challenge of going on the road at University of Washington. We won 20-some games last year, have everybody back. 
be preseason top 25. Uh, either pick one or two in the Pac-12. We're going to go open up there. And whatever happens, it's going to make us better. So we go to Myrtle Beach. Everybody got your tickets yet? <laughs> we, we get by a good, a good Bible team. We have West Virginia, who's a top 10 team. Win or lose there, you got Central Florida, who's picked to win the American. Fort Wake Force at ACC. Uh, we've got road games at Arkansas. They come back here next year. Todd deserves all the credit for that, because that's a football deal. Because I can promise you the basketball coach wasn't going to agree to that. But he worked that out around the channels. We got St. Mary's here at home. We have Wisconsin back in here this year without their officials. <laughs> Thank you. 